It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. For today's episode of Comparative Mythology, I'm going to compare and contrast elements of the Book of Acts to Euripides' Bacchae. Now the main reason why I'm comparing the two ideas for both the Bacchae and the Book of Acts is that when I started to read both books for the first time in ages, I noticed like a lot of similarities between the two stories. So the question, I guess, then becomes like, what's the history behind the Bacchae and why is it so incredibly popular and influential? This right here is an image of the theater of Dionysus. Now, many people know Dionysus as the god of wine, but not many people know that Dionysus was also a god of theater. Now, the theater of Dionysus was actually situated on the south side in Athens, in which all abstract classical plays were first presented. Development on the site began on the creation of the orchestra, a circular floor of the earth 60 feet in diameter with an altar at the center, a place adjacent to temples of nature and of the fertility god Dionysus. The orchestra was used for dramatic performances which together with possession and sacrifice composed the annual spring festival of the god. Now for the case for the Bacchae, it was actually written down roughly around 407 BCE by the playwright named Euripides. Now from what I gather so far, it seems that Euripides actually died before the performance actually began, and so it seems as though he did not necessarily see the first ever performance of this play when it was happening at the Dionysus Theater. The Book of Acts was allegedly written down by St. Luke, the same author for the Book of Luke. It was written down roughly between 70 and 90 CE. So what exactly are the similarities between the Bacchae and the Book of Acts? Now, for starters, according to the book of Acts, we know that Paul himself had a humongous hatred against Christians. Throughout the whole entire story, it seems as though that he went out of his way to persecute as many Christians as possible. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among my known nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers, unto which promise our twelve tribes, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which thing I also did in Jerusalem. And many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. And I punished them oft in every synagogue, and compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. The main character or villain of the Bacchae is a person named Pantheus. And what he does throughout the whole entire story is go out his way to persecute as many people that follow Dionysus as possible and try to crack down the worship of those who celebrate Dionysus. Pantheus speaks by this strange rumor that our own wives our own sisters from their hearths are flown to wild and secret rites, and cluster there, high on the shadowy hills with dance and prayer, to adore this new-made god, this Dionyse, whatever he be. And in their companies deep wine-jars stand, and ever and anon, away into the loneliness now, one steals forth, and now a second, maid or dame, where love lies waiting. Not of God, the flame, they say, of Bacchios wraps them. Bacchios! Nay, tis more to Aphrodite that they pray. Howbeit, all that I have found, my men hold bound and shackled in our dungeon den. The rest, I will go hunt them, ay, and snare my birds with nets of iron to quell their prayer. There is also a story in which Paul was basically caught and sent to prison 
and as soon as he went to prison, there was like a humongous earthquake, and all the prisoners, including Paul, free from that place from the earthquake. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and every one's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. According to the Bacchae, what happens was that Pantheus decided to imprison Dionysus and his followers to a prison, and once that happened, basically Dionysus and his followers free from the prison from an earthquake that happened against the building. Enough. Thy doom is fixed for false pretense corrupting Thebes. Dionysus, not mine, but thine, for dense blindness of heart and for blaspheming God. Pentheus, a ready knave it is and brazen browed this mystery priest. Dionysus, come, say what it shall be, my doom. What dire thing wilt thou do to me? Pentheus, first, uh, shear that delicate curl that dangles there. He beckons to the soldiers who approach Dionysus. Dionysus speaks, I have vowed it to my god, tis holy hair. The soldier cuts off the tress. Pentheus now, Next, yield me thy staff. Dionysus, raise thine own hand to take it. This is Dionysus' wand. Pentheus takes the staff. Pentheus speaks. Last, I will hold thee prisoned here. Be of good cheer. Lo, it is I, the child of Zeus and Semele. A maiden. O oh, master, master, it is thou. Another. O oh, holy voice, be with us now. The voice. Spirit of the chained earthquake, hear my word. Awake, awake. An earthquake suddenly shakes the pillars of the castle. A maiden. Ha! What is coming? Shall the hall of Pentheus, racked in ruin, fall? Leader. One of the most famous moments for Paul is something that is known as the road to Damascus. And so what happens in the story is that Paul sees a light directly on him and he hears a voice directly talking to him, and the voice says towards Paul, Why do you kick against the bricks? Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven, above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. According to the Bacchae, Dionysus directly escapes from prison with his followers, and he meets up with Pantheus, and immediately what he said towards Pantheus was, Why do you kick against the pricks? Pantheus speaks. It bursts hard by us, like a smothered fire, this frenzy of Bacchic women. All my land is made their mock. This needs an iron hand. Ho, captain, quick to the electron gate. Bid gather all my men-at-arms there. 
Call all that spur the charger, all who know to wield the orbed targe or bend the bow. We march to war. For God, shall women dare such deeds against us? Tis too much to bear. Dionysus speaks. Thou markst me not, O king, and beholdest light my solemn words. Yet in thine own despite I warn thee still. Lift thou not up thy spear against a god, but hold thy peace, and fear his wrath. He will not brook it. If thou fright, is chosen from the hills of their delight. Pentheus. Peace thou, and if for once thou hast slipped thy chain, give thanks, or shall I not thine arms again? Dionysus. Better to yield him prayer and sacrifice than kick against the pricks, since Dionysus is God, and thou but mortal. One final comparison between the two stories is the idea of stoning, because for the case of Stephen, he was actually stoned to death according to the book of Acts. Meanwhile, for the case of Pantheus, what he did was to order the stoning the death of a character within the play. Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. Pentheus speaks. Down with that hand, aroint thee to thy right, nor smear on me thy foul contagion. Turning upon Tiresias this. This thy folly heads and prompter shall not miss the justice that he needs. Go half my guard forth to the rock seat where he dwells in ward, o'er birds and wonders. Rend the stone with crow and trident, make one wreck of high and low, and toss his bands to all winds of air. Ha! Have I found the way to sting thee there? The rest forth through the town, and seek amain this girl-faced stranger that hath wrought such bane to all Thebes, preying on our maids and wives. Seek till ye find, and lead him here, to gyves, till he be judged and stoned and weep in blood the day he troubled Pentheus with his god. What do you guys think about my comparisons between the Bacchae and the Book of Acts? Tell me in the comment section down below, am I completely off the mark in this whole entire comparison or am I on to something? And I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't <laughs> find him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Sure.